Today's topic is the mole. Now, when we deal with chemical reactions, we deal with the ratios of, of atoms. In this example here, to create our product, we need one atom of A and two atoms of B. But the problem with this idea is that in the lab, we can't count atoms. We measure everything in weight. To help with this, we use the mole. The mole is just a number, just like a dozen or a hundred or a couple. A mole is defined to be 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23. And we call this number Avogadro's constant. When doing calculations, we abbreviate this to MOL. We just drop off the E. Using our carbon-12 standard from earlier, Avogadro's constant comes from the measurement of how many atoms there would be if you had 12 grams of carbon-12 as your sample. Previously, the masses of individual atoms were too small to physically measure out in the lab, but now we're on a much larger scale with, with moles. So we now can start quantifying our measurements in grams, not just atoms. Now we're going to do some practice problems from the textbook and uh, before we get into that we just have to cover some important formulas. So I've got a few here. We've got Avogadro's number. You must memorize 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23. Now that is in per mole. That minus sign just means per mole. For every mole that's how many stuff you got. Molar mass is the number of mass divided by the number of moles. And we've got moles here. Now, I don't think this is a really good equation, but if you like memorizing equations, then just do that. So number of moles is equal to the number of particles divided by Avogadro's number down the bottom. From the textbook, we have a bunch of questions. So I'm gonna start at question two. And this is from page 53 from the textbook. And it says, calculate the number of atoms of chlorine or chlorine ions in A, 2.3 moles of chlorine atoms. Now you could use this formula here, moles is equal to the number of particles divided by Avogadro's number, and then rearrange the equation. Because it's telling you the number of moles, so you stick it into the left-hand side. You already know Avogadro's number, and you can just rejig the equation to solve for the unknown, which is the number of particles. But I like to use the following method instead. Okay, by definition, one mole is equal to. Therefore, if we've got 2.3 moles, then it's just going to be 2.3 times bigger than this number. So you multiply both sides by 2.3, punching that into our calculator, and I get a result of 1.384 times 10 to the power of 24 atoms. The thing about significant figures is that if you started off with three significant figures, you have to finish off with three significant figures. So I've got to round this four. Now, since four is less than five, it's not gonna make a difference to the neighboring eight. So it's just gonna be 1.38 times 10 to the power of 24 atoms. Done. Question 2B. Calculate the number of atoms. I've given a symbol hash for numbers of chlorine atoms inside of 15.8 moles. Now the symbol for that in an equation is an N of molecules of chlorine. So we do the same procedure as above in the previous example. In this case, we've got a mole of molecules of chlorine. So I've got to write molecules. This is a trick, okay? Watch out for this. So that's the definition. We need to scale this up by 15.8 times. And we get a result of 9.5116 times 10 to the power of 24 molecules. Now remember that significant figures have to stay the same. So we've got three significant figures up here um, to the decimal place. You have to say, have the same number. So I need to have, need to round off to two decimal places, the six and the one, that's not gonna round up the rest, so it's gonna be just molecules of chlorine. Now it's asking in the original question, calculate the number of atoms. We've got molecules. Now, if you think about it, we should double our answer. And the reason being is if I have 
say, two dozen ships in a fleet, each carrying chlorine gas. If I have a dozen of these ships, then the number of chlorine atoms I have would be two in every ship. So our calculation would be two times 12, because that's a dozen, two times 12 chlorine atoms, which would give us 24. So in the same thing here, instead of using dozen, we now have 9.51 times 10 to the 24 molecules of chlorine. Okay, so we have to double this number because every molecule is carrying two of those atoms. Done.